Welcome back to uh, Pompeii and Herculaneum students. This video is going to look at the site layout and streetscapes and this time we are going to focus on Herculaneum. If you're interested in Pompeii, there's a separate video that takes a look at Pompeii. So what does it look like? So this is a picture of Herculaneum and where we would be standing wouldn't be possible in ancient times because we would actually be in the water. Herculaneum itself, this would have been the edge of the town and this would have been a beachfront and we would have been up in the air looking down but basically in the ocean here looking back at the town because it is, it's a coastal town. It had fishing and a number of other seafaring type industries but Predominantly, it seems to have been a very nice holiday town to come and visit. Have a, a think about being in this house, looking out over the beach. Even this is a bathhouse. Imagine having a bath here. So one of the things to understand straight away about Herculaneum is it's positioned quite differently to Pompeii here on the edge of the sea. How big is it? Well, we estimate that Herculaneum was about 22 hectares. What's that? 22 football fields, much smaller than Pompeii, which is estimated at 66 hectares. But at Herculaneum, only about 30% of the town has been excavated. So we've actually got more uh, underneath this vol continuing volcanic, volcanic material uh, and underneath the modern town of Ercolano. Here you can see Vesuvius just poking out in the background there. So there's a lot more that could be learned about Herculaneum and that's a discussion to have later on in the unit about why we should or should not excavate any more. Population, we really don't know but we are estimating that Herculaneum probably had about 5,000 inhabitants. And as I've already said an important feature of Herculaneum is it is on the edge of the sea. This is a grid layout to show you. So down here is that um, looking, so we were looking in this direction. So this would be the beach and we can see a number of streets with this lovely area out the front. So just like uh, Pompeii, there is a grid layout. Of course, we've only exposed a much smaller amount of it in the town of Herculaneum. So these are a little bit off, but you can see here again our Decumani. So the Decumanus Maximus up here, the Decumanus Interior here, and then the cross streets, the Cardos, are much um, smaller and thinner in Herculaneum leading up from the seashore. There are also public spaces in Herculaneum, um, in particular this one down here, an open terrace area. This is called the Sacred Area. There are a number of sh small shrines, uh, and we will take a look at a statue in a moment. Another public area would have been this palestra here, which is only partly excavated. All of this is actually still under the volcanic material today, but he's, um, just a little bit on the edge of the palestra. Where were the other public spaces in Herculaneum? Well, we think, we think that perhaps our forum is, it's just around here. Around these edges here, we seem to have been excavating a number of different public buildings, uh, but a lot of the public buildings have not yet been excavated at Herculaneum. There is a theatre that's been found. It's buried underneath the volcanic material only accessible by extremely dangerous tunnels for um, not open to the public at all. If we want to take a look at this sacred area here, you can see this picture. So again, we're looking, this is, we'd be in the ocean here, and you can see the boathouses that would have been down on the beachfront. And yes, this is are the, the, the famous areas where a number of skeletons have been found of those victims of the Vesuvius eruption. Up above the boathouses, we have these open public areas. This one here has the statues been put up of Marcus Nonius Balbus, a very important person who was a patron of Herculaneum. Uh, and there is a sacred area over here. So one of the things that you can see is 
this is the if this was the seashore we can see that Herculaneum actually have to be built up and a number of the houses imagine having a nice villa up here looking out over the ocean uh, a number of the houses are built up so one of the things that we do see is that there is a sea wall so this again would over here would have been the ocean lapping up here and the town itself had to be built up on a sea wall this is actually a nice nice house up here the house of Aristides we had the same phenomenon at Herculaneum as we had at Pompeii and that is the block called the insula and again each insula is consists of a a mixed variety of different things this one has a number of lovely houses but also uh, some taverns and things built in here so again some mixed types of dwellings within one insula um, and you can see here some a bath house as well we've got a baker on this corner but not as much industry as we saw at Pompeii this here is the Decumanus Maximus. You can see how beautifully wide this street is. Again, this would have been paved. Um, and another feature you can see, the raised footpaths. So the same thing at Herculaneum and Pompeii. And another feature we can see, two-storey houses. We actually have a few more of these dwellings have been uh, preserved at Herculaneum. Uh, and this is sort of the edge. We're just getting into these public areas here on the right, which have not been excavated, uh, but just gives us a, a you know a, a taste of the kind of uh, town that Herculaneum would have been. This is one of the Cardo um, streets, so the narrower streets coming up from the seaside. And again, you can see raised footpath, paved street uh, with all of the dwellings. Um, coming onto it and again this two-story uh, thing a lot of reconstruction of course has to go into preserving these um, and, and keeping them upright but we do have very much that sense of a two-story town going on this is uh, another of the streets and again this one just shows you this two-story dwelling this particular house here called the house of the trellis of course, that's a modern name, not the name it would have been called in antiquity. And it's a different construction, almost like a prefabricated construction uh, that would have been brought in for a quick, uh, easy assembly, perhaps some kind of cheap expansion of the house, but maybe. Lovely house here. And one of the other features you can see is that the outsides of the houses were not particularly beautifully decorated. The windows up high, not big windows. Uh, as you went into this house, that's where you would have seen the luxury and the beautiful paintings. Also here, this seat outside. So certainly if you had visitors coming in to see the master of this house for the salutatio in the mornings, uh, here is a place where they might have been able to wait for their turn to get inside the atrium. And here are some people, bad tourists, making themselves comfortable on one of these seats as they look at a map of Herculaneum themselves. An important feature of Herculaneum, just as we find at Pompeii, are the water fountains on the streets. So providing uh, water for uh, everyday people would have come down through the aqueducts, there would have been a tap here coming into the fountain. So an important public service to provide fresh water for everybody in Herculaneum. Again, if you were rich, you would have had it pumped directly into your own house, but not everybody had that. An important feature of Herculaneum though, now let's do some contrasts. Herculaneum and Pompeii, remember the stepping stones at Pompeii. We haven't seen them anywhere at Herculaneum, have we? That is because Herculaneum has its own inbuilt sewerage system, much better placed to actually have the water be able to drain away. And in fact, that sewerage system has been dug out analyzed the things that were in the sewer but been dug out and today this is a modern great of course but the sewage system built into ancient Herculaneum still works today to provide fantastic drainage for the the, the town itself so if we have an overview and this applies for both Pompeii and Herculaneum if you need to write something looking at the site layout or the plans and the streetscapes of Pompeii or Herculaneum, there's a few things here on this list that you might want to think about 
taking a look at. How big was it? How much of it's been excavated? Understanding that there is a modern numbering system and a naming system in place. We'll take a closer look at that later on. Pompeii, of course, as we saw, has walls and gates. Herculaneum is on the seafront. If Herculaneum does have a wall, that's further out the back of the town and we have not yet excavated that. We've got the street patterns in a grid-like fashion with a decumanus one way, a cardo the other way, and our blocks called the one insula or two insulae. Um, and we get this mix of residential, commercial, and in Pompeii, a bit more of the light industry. We also have some areas in Pompeii, because it's so big, we actually have horticulture as well, the growing of stuff. We've got open public areas for, with public purposes and public buildings. We'll look more at what those public buildings are later on. It's just important to understand this mix of space within the town. Paved roads, footpaths, raised footpaths, and the roads, of course, are of differing sizes depending upon where they are going. Pompeii, special feature, has the stepping stones and the wheel ruts showing us the amount of wheeled traffic going through the town. We don't get that so much at Herculaneum. Clearly, uh, not, as either, not as much industry or more restrictions on the cart traffic coming in. But what we do get at Herculaneum is its unique sewerage system, uh, which really helps to protect it. Single and double storey buildings in both of our towns and public fountains on the streets are a common feature. I hope that this helps to give you a bit of an introduction to the sites of Herculaneum in this video, Pompeii in the other video. Now you've got a bit more of a sense of what it actually looks like and some of the features that you would see as you're walking around the towns. Thank you.